up. She's hot. You already have a draw off? We did a force draw. Yeah. All right. So, I think I'm live. I think I'm live. I hope I'm not like private. This isn't a public view. That would stink. So, let's turn you around. So, Austin's making some new uh, new tubing or new uh, hoses. That, yeah, we got a lot of tape on our ho old hoses. So he's actually replacing this. We got some new Milkos here. So I'll show you where everything's starting. A lot of stainless in here. All right. So this is sap that was delivered today. And they finished putting this through the RO yesterday. And this is just permeate, extra permeate water. Kevin likes to keep it around. Yeah, that's pure water. Looks blue, doesn't it? Uh, most of our permeates in this tank here. So these are some drums that go to farmers. But uh, we also pack syrup in these drums. So there's pure water inside this guy. Let's see if I can get you a shot. This is all pure water in here. The flashlight's not working right. So this is just pure water. Same stuff that's in that other tank. Take it for a walk. So let's start from the sap tank. And we're going to go to these reverse osmosis. These things are running. Kevin's had them running all day. Um, let's see how high he's running the concentrate. Let's do the test together. I'll turn you around. I tend to use conductivity as a measurement, although the sugar won't read the minerals well. So 336, not sure if you can see that. what the incoming sap is. I don't know if you guys can hear me. He's taking it up to 2,000. So that's what? It's about seven times higher. So he's concentrating about seven times higher. In this unit, it's about the same. He's taking it up about seven times higher. So this is just steam water. Trev. So I'll take you up and see if I can go up this ladder. One hand. The ladder of death. So this is where all the concentrates going from down below. So we're taking the sap that's in those tanks out there. We're running those through the reverse osmosis, the raw sap. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is concentrated sap. Hey, Kev, what's the bricks on your uh, concentrate? Seems like I had around 17. 17? What's it coming in at? Uh, three? Yeah, three. One, one five? One, one, three, one, five. Gotcha. We're getting ready for our pancake breakfast tomorrow, uh, Saturday. So make sure you come out Saturday, this Saturday, next Saturday. So March 4th and March 11th. We've been doing this pancake breakfast for about 20 years. And it's just tradition. So hope to see you out here. Um, we, there's pancakes, sausage, maple syrup live music and uh, it's a good time.
uh, the smells, the fellowship, the laughter, and then uh, we'll be giving tours. I hope to see some of you. So I gotta go try to go down these this ladder here without dropping me or you. Stick with me. Stick with me. So it goes from this tank down this pipe right here into this float box and that's where we're going next. So it goes down this tank into the float box. So let's go up here. We're making syrup folks. So this float controls the level of this, it's called the steam away. There's pipes that actually fall at a, a slope, it's sloped at a slight angle. And what'll happen is all that steam water from down below, the steam will actually from down below go through these pipes, condense, and go right down that hole. So this is where the sap comes in and it's preheated. I'll just put a little bit of Defoamer in there for them. A little dab will do you. So, shut this guy. Let's see if I can get you a good shot inside the flue pan here. See how it's rumbling in there? So, it's actually preheated up above. The way it's preheated is all of the steam that's in here. It's going right up above in those little tiny pipes. And those pipes condense the steam as the cooler sap, this cooler sap right here, flows in. And all that, that steam will condense, will come right down here into this condensate pump. And that condensate pump pushes it, well it's, Actually got a copper pipe right here. Comes across. And that copper pipe comes right out here. And we just collect that water and use it for washing. Austin's using it for softening this his uh, hose so he can get an end on it. But now I'm gonna show you after the flue pan, where does it go? My hat's always on crooked. Does not matter. My hat's always crooked. Let me turn you around. So that that's that uh, sap that's up in the steam away where those those pipes are, it preheats at 200 degrees, and then from there it'll flow down into this box. This is another float box. The float controls the level. So you can see as the level drops, it'll add more liquid. And it'll work its way around the flue pan. Again, this is the same pan, just the other side. So it's a better rumble up front for sure. It rumbles harder up front, man. It does. It does. Seem like it's boiling hard tonight or today. Uh, so we had a major boiling point change from the last time we boiled. We boiled last time it's at two eleven point four. The atmosphere going, it's boiling in front of water today. It's like 210.2. 210.2. So, so it's a big drop. So, so it's a lower boiling point today. Lower boiling point, thus the stuff in the pan was really heavy. Gotcha. Gotcha. This is our uh oh. We had to add this thing. This is our uh oh line. So it's okay. nice to know the level in this pan. You can't see in there. And then this float here controls the level in the syrup pan. So this is the syrup pan. And you can see, Kev, you want to explain how the sap or the what's soon to be syrup, the gradient as it moves through. It's coming in through the from the flue pan through the float box. This is a reversible flow pan, so you can change the draw off side. You can draw off here, or you can draw off down there. My preference, for whatever reason, seems to be the draw here. It seems like it's easier. It's hotter. So 
the float box feet, this line takes it into the very front compartment, that first square up near the trunk. This valve is open, allowing the sap almost syrup to enter. It then traverses the pan, and this is the recirc line right here. This kind of takes it from uh, takes it from this box here. So this is a separation. It goes from here. Let me open this guy if I can. So it actually will flow from this box down around here, comes down back around, flows through this box outside the evaporator, and then it flows through here, back around, and it's almost syrup. So you can see there's a lot more foam here because it's closer to syrup. And this isn't quite, you know, if I had to guess, this is probably like 35, 40 bricks. Yeah. Maybe, you know. Yeah, guess, yeah, and then as it moves through, it becomes closer and closer to syrup. So and this is going to be... And what we're looking for is this temperature... I don't want to say it doesn't matter, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> this is just how we control when that valve opens up. So you can see we have a ghost here that opens and closes that valve for us. We appreciate him. We assume it's a heat. That's a self-modulating draw valve. So, so see how it moves? And it's controlled by this. So if it starts getting hotter, this will actually open up and flow faster because we want this to be syrup. And just for reference, when you change this draw valve to another to the other compartment, it's very important you change this uh, probe, this <laughs> because if you don't... You make candy. You make candy. Yeah, we've all done it. So you can see the way it looks. I mean, see how it's got that pearlescence in there? Like those bubbles. Same thing. See how it's got that pearlescence? And then when you move over to here, you can really see it. Now I can tell from the smell this is, I don't know. You think Zach will dock us on this? He, he said he needed some commercial grade. Oh. <laughs> Right there, Zach. He's the one that's going to dock us. So we got Austin, Zach, Trevor, Kevin. I'm trying to make the top tractor tire wheel ballast, but Nate's not letting me do that. <laughs> and I'm Nate, so we're making soup. We are making soup. Let me show you some of the automation here. So this is the farm block system. I apologize, these are gonna be moved out for the pancake breakfast tomorrow. But you can see, this is the farm block system uh, at Camp Beaumont. Let's see if I can scroll down for you. So you got the pump house, green means good. And we're actually still like unthawing, I guess it's a good way to say it. Getting a call, can't do it right now, sorry. And then here's the same thing, just in a list. And then I've got the CDL system here for the farm. So these are the sap tanks at the farm. And I have been trying to get our cameras to work so you can see. We've got several cameras. Hopefully this will work. I'm going to show you what's going on at the farm since we haul the sap here. If anybody wants to see anything, let me know. You know, we're getting the coffee makers ready. You know, getting ready for our pancake breakfast tomorrow, but it doesn't look like the cameras want to mm -hmm. cooperate. Yep, not cooperating. That is not interesting. Watching the screen load is not interesting. So what's interesting to you? What do you want to see? Making syrup. Let me explain it more. Once the draw is full, what they'll do is they'll put in diametaceous earth, which is a filter aid. I actually don't see it. It's usually a bin. Where's your diametation, sir? We're looking for it. I don't see it. 
Anyways, he just. Oh, Austin's filling it. Such an overachiever. I know. So this one's that's about a, almost a drum of syrup. Just about. Yep. And this is uh, this will be the next you know drum. Probably get about 30 gallons out of this. Yeah, yeah. We'll get a rejuvenated press. Are you gonna try? I'm gonna try. Has that worked well? One time it worked. The other time it didn't work. Gotcha. Did work, but not great. Gotcha. So how much have you put through this press? You've only put it wrong through this press. Okay. So what he's gonna try to do is use the heat from this. It's kind of like a heater block in a diesel engine. I'll take the uh, lift the skirt on this guy here. That's uh, our blanket to keep it warm. So these are plates in the filter press. So what he's gonna do is he's gonna drain this tank. It's gonna come through here. This uh, diaphragm pump will push down through here and instead of running it through the presses, and these are papers, and coming out this end with fi finished goods, they'll actually open this valve and they'll try to heat all of this up. It's kind of cold. You know, this is all aluminum and this filter's so much better when it's warm. So he's gonna basically use the heat from one of these just to get this baby warmed up. I don't know if that makes sense. But oh, Kev, let's uh, let's show them what you're doing with the. Uh, this yeah. is interesting. Okay. A lot of science here. And we're actually at half a brick over on this. I'll yeah. take it. Ship it. <laughs> okay. So what we're gonna do? We mix it up really good to make sure what was in the kettle or what was in the draw tank prior to the draw mix in, mixes in with what was drawn off recently just now. Hey, if, can you guys hear us okay? I might have to have these guys yellow, or yell, sorry, yellow. I'm used to a mic. Yeah, it's true. So Kevin's grabbing a sample. I'm Notice a sample. he did not submerge the thermometer. No, that's... But there's a temperature right there. This is called a temperature compensated hydrometer cup. Uh, obviously, when liquids are hot, they will be more uh, less viscous. So he's taking the hydrometer. Shivering it up. Trying to actually get the temperature of it up. Bring clean water. all that water off. Yep. We don't want it. He's gonna put the hydrometer in. We don't drop it. We just let it ease in. And the road is about 60. Yeah, 60, I'd say 60 and a half, boss. 60 and a half. Yeah, almost knocked that over. Yeah. 60 and a half. So you take that number, the red line is 59, 60 and a half. At 199, and we are actually a brick. So this chart is everything. Breaking I don't understand how people don't use this. I I really don't. I guess it would explain why the density of every drum of syrup we get in is uh, different. But uh, where are we at? We're at 195. So brick and a half over. Yeah. So we're 67.5. So we're a brick over. So. That's how you figure out your bricks. Austin has the DE. They're getting ready. I'm gonna move out of everybody's way. I don't actually work, I just irritate people and get in the way. I make YouTube videos. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna have uh, live music tomorrow. So here's the stage. You gotta have a shirt that works for the stage. And uh, we can go for a walk if you want. Uh, if anybody wants me to take a walk, I can absolutely go through this facility. If something you want to see. Some people, some people just want to see syrup being made. But uh, these guys are getting the DE. Oh, I see what he's doing. So because we're a little bit over, a little bit too dense, what Kevin's going to do is put a little bit of that hot water inside to bring the bricks down. And he, get, he got that from this chart, how much you want to bring the bricks down. So it tells you how much, how many fluid ounces you add per gallon of syrup. Yep. So while these guys are getting ready, I can give you a tour of the tractor. 
Maybe some of you would want to see the tractor. Well, I don't know, maybe, maybe not. I have to get the keys out of my truck. I don't know. Let's show you some steam coming up. I can give you a little tour of the tractor if you'd like. So, yeah, this is the steam coming up out of the sugar works here. So it smells like maple in this town. Hey, it could be worse. I mean, the residents in this little neighborhood, from a 1940s neighborhood, 1950s, air factory, I guess. But uh, there's the steam coming up. Let me grab the keys. Well, they're getting that filter press ready. Why not? Check out the cab, I guess. At some point, I probably should get that piece of protective cardboard out of there. So, this is my snow pushing machine. It's been a weird winter. I have only been able to plow snow once. So, I figure it's because I bought a tractor to plow snow that we've only plowed once. It's kind of my thought. But, yeah. I haven't, haven't been able to use it, so sometimes I just come sit in here. I'm excited uh, to plow. I think we're going to disc. Joe's got me. I'm going to disc with him. He's got a few fields, so I've never done that on a big scale. So, yeah. They're probably about ready for us. So let's go in, take a look at the uh, filtering process. Sorry about the Blair Witch stuff going on here. Not a lot of comments coming up, or I'm just not noticing it. Got your DE mixed in? Got some DE mixed in. Uh, we're gonna give it a whirl, see how it works. I'm waiting for us to get back. Yeah, that way we have somebody to blame. Yeah, here he is. Here he is. We got six or eight. Not much stuff. We we wanted to wait for you, so we have somebody to blame. So, Green Green Blood Scott says, how much DE do you use per gallon of syrup? I go, we learned by trial and error. And when we first start, we put a pile of DE in there. And then after that, we just bigger press, 15 inch press, do about three quarters of a scoop. And per side, right? Per side. So the important thing is, is to really fill it the first time we call it charging the press because whatever goes through the filter press first every drop of syrup after that's going to have to go through it so if you don't put enough de in at the beginning you're really going to struggle to get your pressure up but i think uh lawrence here we're going to have to load him up he's got drums he's taken to wisconsin um so andy we got some drums we're going to load up, some of these. We've got some new ones going up to Wisconsin. And we got some used ones. Is this Lorne? Is this Lorne here? Oh, false alarm. 4.30. Oh, okay. We got another interview today. You want to say hi to everybody at YouTube, Ted? Hey. Hey, YouTube. What's going on? Watching the boil down happen? Yeah, we're making soup. And we got a truck here. Oh, are we getting a delivery? Yeah, take them through the warehouse, why not? Jess, you've been working that thing today. I know. Jess has been working this thing. So, so here's our finished goods warehouse. Um, this is where, this is about two months worth of inventory. I don't know, maybe people find this interesting. Uh, my entire operation was in 
uh, five buildings on three properties smaller than this thing when we first bought this my wife and I first bought this building I thought I was gonna have to do boat storage and they still tease me today they're always like Nate where are you gonna put the boats was very funny so yeah we started and just ran out of room but uh, yeah two months worth of inventory in this warehouse right now this heater's going I'm actually gonna turn it off So Jess is loading them up. We do a lot of uh, plastic jug labeling for people. So there's uh, totes, totes of uh, Vermont syrup we made, just staged and ready to ship. I didn't mean to say totes of Vermont syrup we made. We bought the Vermont syrup from Vermont hauled it here to Ohio and basically normalized it to make sure it's all the good flavor we wanted or the customer wants. But uh, yeah, what else can I tell you? Oh, this is kind of cool. Here's a picture of Ronald Reagan standing in front of this building. Uh, this is 1960 and Ronald Reagan used to work for General Electric. so. This uh, facility here that, that we're in today is right behind here, and there's old, uh, there's the Gipper. This is our storefront. People come in and buy maple syrup. And then you can see, there's my dad's cutting boards. Right here, he makes a lot of these cutting boards. But uh, yeah, there's my three boys. You can see March 23rd, so this Saturday, this is the actual tour that we put on uh, the first two Saturdays of March. But uh, yeah, this is kind of a, just a little walk through. This is all tap stained maple, which I think is cool. This is maple that most uh, sawmills, they despise hitting these things here. This will, it's not good for the old hydraulic mill to hit one of these pieces but this is what it looks like when they cut down a maple tree that's been tapped so this is sugar maple that's been tapped and it's a byproduct or a waste product but we like it we try to use it in all of our displays and stuff I hope this is helpful I was planning on doing this for a half hour Burner kicked out. Drawn out way too fast. We're out running the blue fan. Oh yeah. Kill it for a minute and let everything yeah. kind of settle. Hey, you can do that with natural gas. At least it's not firewood, and we're pulling out flaming logs out of the front of the arch. Done that. Been there, done that. So the press is just warming up. I think that's about wraps it up. And uh, thanks for jumping on this live stream, kind of an impromptu live stream. So, hey, hope to see you on Saturday. And uh, there is a chance I may not be there on March 11th. So if Jonathan qualifies for states this Saturday, I will not be here on the 11th. I think I should go to Hershey, Pennsylvania with my son. Yeah. It's the right thing to do as a dad. But uh, hey, thanks for stopping by. And uh, catch you in the next episode.